One of the most common questions I see in different fasting communities, especially for beginners, is will X break my fast? So here's a quick video that'll help answer any variation of this question. My name is Joe Guevara and I analyze the science and research behind fasting, nutrition, fitness, and longevity. So let's look at what both the practical and scientific answer is to this question. First and foremost, why do people ask this question? Well, I would assume either that they're afraid that they're suddenly going to stop losing weight or that somehow the health benefits stop the moment that you put a calorie in your mouth or just because it goes counter to the traditional definition of fasting. So the best answer to this question, let's define what breaking a fast actually means. Like we've covered in our fasting science series, the benefits of fasting come from two main things. One, the rapid increase in ketones, which is the sign you're pulling energy away from stored body fat and also providing energy, brain health, and hunger benefits that help keep you energized and satiated. Second is autophagy, which is the body's cleaning mechanism of senescent or zombie cells, which is triggered by a reduction in insulin, which some people are trying to achieve like me for the health benefits. Quick plug, I just posted the first of my Fasting 101 series on autophagy if you want to check it out on my channel. So based on these definitions and goals, regardless of what you're thinking of eating, if it's a micronutrient or if it has protein, fat, or carbohydrates, 100% it did break your fast because all micronutrients spike insulin and prevent body fat utilization. So end the video, right? Well, not quite, because that's not the actual important question. The real question is how long did it break your fast for? Just like it takes time to ramp up and get into a fully fasted state, it also takes time to ramp down and get out of a fully fasted state. In this case, it depends on how much you eat. Breaking a fast is time dependent, content dependent, and dose dependent. Let me explain by talking about your macros and what it does to your body. If you eat carbs, you'll spike your insulin high very quickly, but it also goes down very quickly, and the energy you consume will largely be burned off as energy before anything else in your body. The same reason why if you always eat throughout the day, it's impossible to burn body fat because your insulin's always high. And it's literally insulin's job to prevent fat loss from happening until you run out of glucose or glycogen. If you eat protein or fat, you'll still spike your insulin, yes, but at a much lower amount, fat less so than protein. However, it takes longer to digest both protein and fat. So the amount of time you're actually breaking your fast might be longer. However, through that time, you'll still be in a pseudo fasted state. Assuming your definition of fasting is the same as what I highlighted above, low insulin and high ketones. Lastly, and probably most importantly, is how much it's breaking your fast. It's interesting how many people ask about what toothpaste or gum does to a fast. Does it break a fast? Well, actually, yes, even though it has no calories, and I'll get to that in a second. But ask yourself, how many calories whatever you're consuming has? And that's going to be correlated with how long you'll be kicked out of a fast for. Toothpaste? Not going to do so much. Even if you ate a tablespoon of pure sugar, you'll be kicked out of a fast for maybe an hour max, before ramping back down into both ketosis and autophagy although your hunger hormones might be spiked, so you'll have a harder time maintaining your fast moving forward. So this is just a warning for anyone who's tempted to just have a sh quick sugary snack when fasting or even before you start a fast. Which brings me to my final points and certain exceptions. Low or no calorie sweeteners. Yes, sweeteners do break your fast because they do spike insulin and stop ketone production. Although they don't have calories, they induce something called the cephalic phase insulin release or CPIR, which is the mechanism where your body starts to produce insulin in preparation for glucose rich foods once you taste something sweet. This is why even Coke Zero or sugar free items make people who fast usually hungrier than people who don't. How about coffee or caffeine? Kind of. According to a study in 2018, coffee consumption does increase insulin levels. However, it does trigger other pathways like increasing adrenaline that causes your body to burn off any available blood glucose faster. So personally, I wouldn't mind caffeine, even though I am experimenting with caffeine and its effects on fasting and hunger and doing without it. What about creatine or supplements? Generally, no. For any type of supplements you take, like I mentioned with everything you consume being dose dependent, the amount of calories in any supplements are negligible. Creatine is actually protein, or specifically an amino acid made by combining glycine, arginine, and methionine by your liver when you produce it naturally. 
But again, as your body quickly uses these proteins and they virtually have zero calories, the impact to your fast is virtually nothing. And personally, the studied benefits of creatine are so high, which is why I take creatine even during a fast to make sure I'm still muscle loaded for when I get back to working out after I finish an extended fast. Which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Canadian Protein. My personal supplement source since 2015 because they have third party lab tested supplements, high quality products and cheaper wholesale prices. They do also ship to the US and have lots more than protein, including some vegan items. So go to this address and check out the selection if you're looking at getting some supplements before, during or after your own fast like I do, like creatine monohydrate or grass fed whey protein isolate my own two staples for my own fasting, weight loss, and muscle building journey. Now, if you've watched this far and enjoy the content, please do subscribe, but more importantly, share this with your friends and loved ones or anyone you see on Reddit asking the same question since I made this video primarily for them so that we can continue to spread the word of fasting to others. I primarily post here on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, all at Rehash Fitness. Again, my name is Joe Guevara, and with that, I hope you all stay curious, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you all in the next one.